Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing newborn essentials. If you guys are new here, my name is Chelsea. I'm a new first time mom to a two month old baby girl named Penelope. So if you're into motherhood related videos, vlogs, and some beauty and fashion, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like if you enjoyed. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. I actually have Penelope right here next to me in her bouncer. I think she's gonna take a little nap um, because I wanted to film this in her nursery and she naps in her nursery, so. This was the only way that I was going to be able to do it. <laughs> so the first thing that you're going to need, whether you're breastfeeding or formula feeding, is bottles. Now I know if you're exclusively breastfeeding, you're not going to need a bottle, but eventually you most likely will need some kind of bottle. You're going to want to break from having the baby always on your boob. So when I need that little break, I do have my husband feed her um, with either of these two bottles. This is the Kind or Kindy. I'm not exactly sure how you say this. I said that in my last video. But this is their bottle system. I love it. You can buy the bags that you can pump directly into. So these, these are great for breastfeeding moms. And then the bottle is this little plastic part here. You stick this in here, click it in, add the nipple, and you're good to go. I think you can pretty much put any nipple on this kind of bottle. But they do come with their own nipples. And I actually love their nipples. They're one of my favorites that I've had her try so far they just look very boobish to me like very long like the nipples very long and it's a nice slow flow so I appreciate that because I don't want her to have anything too fast because I don't want her to prefer the bottle over my boob the other bottle that I've tried is the Dr. Brown's bottles these are anti-colic and actually so are the kind or kindy system they're um, anti-colic as well she's not a colicky baby but anything to prevent gas you're gonna want I'm telling you it's just they're uncomfortable when they're gassy and you can't always get a burp out so you're gonna want it so this is the other bottle that we use she only liked these two bottles so far or these two nipples I should say the only thing I will say is these tend to leak um, so I do prefer the kind ones. my recommendation is though on bottles is just don't get a whole bunch of one kind of bottle your baby is going to tell you which bottle she wants basically so get a pack of one or two but don't waste your money on a whole bunch of different kind of bottles because if she doesn't like them then you're just stuck with all these extra bottles and that's not fun I actually registered only for those two bottles and all the other ones that she tried all came from free perks that I've gotten through different, you know, um, registries that I subscribe to and things like that. Next thing that I would say to have on your list or to just keep just in case is gripe water. This is a product that you will use if your baby is super gassy and you cannot get them to stop crying or feeling super uncomfortable. You've tried the bicycle like wheel legs, you've tried burping them, you've tried it all and they cannot stop crying because they're gassy. It's just something good to have. It's not that expensive, so you might as well pick it up. I would say it was more so used in the beginning when she was gassy. Now she's pretty good. I burp her and she's good to go. But I did appreciate having it when she was super gassy and I felt like I couldn't get her to stop crying and it instantly worked for me. Is it gonna work for everyone? No, but I think it's worth just having just in case. So I consider it a newborn essential. If you're breastfeeding, you're gonna need vitamin D drops. Your doctor is going to recommend them because your breast milk does not have vitamin D. So the ones that I use are the Infamel D uh, Divisol. I think that's how you pronounce it. Your pediatrician will, you know, tell you a couple of different ones that they recommend. You can also look online, look at reviews, you can look at natural ones. I'm just sticking to this one because this is the one that she likes. She doesn't get fussy. She takes it. I think it's sweet even though it smells very vitamin-ish because it's a vitamin. She seems to like it so I don't want to change it. So this is the um, Infamel one like I said, Divisol Vitamin D Drops. The Nose Frida. So I haven't used this that often. I have to say I'm going to talk about something that I use way more often and I definitely say it's a must-have. Um, or an essential newborn essential, but you're gonna want something to suck those boogers out of your child's nose If not in the beginning a little bit later They just tend to get a lot of boogers and I remember thinking that she just was gonna stay like clean of boogers until she was older For some reason I just felt like she was just pure little baby that just would never get like Anything for a while. I don't know why but yes I am constantly taking out boogers out of her nose and if there's like a bunch in there, which doesn't happen that often, I feel like I'll use this more when she's sick, which hopefully doesn't happen for a long time. But it is very easy to use and that's why I'm saying it's a newborn essential. They do make knockoffs. I've seen some on Amazon. So if you don't want to spend the money on the actual Nose Frida brand, I would still get something to suck those boogers out of your child's nose. But this is my favorite thing in the world to take those little boogers out. You're such a mom when that's like a favorite thing for you to do. This is called the Oogie Bear. 
I think it's called Oogie Bear. I'm going to have everything on my Amazon page. And if it's not, then I'm going to link it down below. But I will link my Amazon page down below. Um, this is like basically a nose picker. Their nostrils are so tiny. And even if you see a booger like on the surface of the nostril and you just want to pick it out, you will not be able to. They're so tiny, their little nostrils. So I love this because it makes it so easy. And the bear is meant to stop it where you don't go too far up into their nose. So I usually just go right up in there and I scoop out the booger and most of the time it comes right out. Sometimes I have to go in there a couple times. She doesn't love it, but it makes it so easy and so like, it's so satisfying to get that booger out of their nose. I know, disgusting, but it is. <laughs> One side is different than the other. You can also use it to scrape like inside their ear and clean out inside their ear. It's like this like amazing little plastic tool that you would never think that you need, but you need it, I'm telling you. And it comes in a pack of two and I would highly recommend it. Nail Clipper and Nail Filer. Again, this is the Frida Baby brand. Um, I just really like their stuff, so you don't have to get the Frida Baby brand, but this is the one I have experience with and I like. When she first came home from the hospital, again, she was very tiny. Her nails were tiny, everything was tiny. So I ended up just using this file on her and it's just the cutest little easy file to use. You just get in there and file their little nails when they're sleeping so you don't have to worry about clipping them because um, that can be super intimidating. But now recently I've been able to clip her nails and feel a little bit more comfortable with it. And this just makes it easy. It has a little window so you can see where the nail is. That's more I think when she gets a little older because right now they're still so tiny. I can't really tell when I put her nail in like, oh, I can see it. I'm just so concentrated on pushing back her skin and getting the nail and not clipping her that I'm not even paying attention to that. But they're very easy to use and then after I will file them a little bit just to get rid of those really sharp edges because they're so sharp those little nails so definitely some kind of nail filing kit I do have the electronic one that people rave about um, but I just yet to use it I just feel like this is fine like it's just what works for you it's something to clip or file your baby's nails you're gonna need it okay so I want to talk about some bath stuff you're gonna need something to wash your baby with I think that's obvious anything that you want any brand that you want I'm just gonna share the two that I use I use baby Gannix and Mustela the Mustela smells so good it just smells like clean fresh baby and I just love how it smells but if you want something more um, unscented or a little bit more gentle the baby Gannix line is the way to go this one is chamomile scented but this is the lotion the actual body like shampoo stuff doesn't smell strong at all and it's very gentle it's a foam so it's not super drying or harsh and I use that on her from like day one or when I was able to give her a bath up until recently then I kind of switched to this one just because it smells so good and it's just it's a little bit like thicker of a wash and I just feel like I'm getting her a little bit more clean but in the beginning you really don't need much and even now she's two months old like how dirty is she really getting but I just like to really clean with you know between her rolls on her neck and her body with the mistella now that I'm giving her more baths more often I do rotate back and forth just to not over dry her skin not necessary for you guys to have two I'm just saying Definitely some kind of shampoo, conditioner, I mean, shampoo and conditioner, no. <laughs> some kind of shampoo, body wash, bubble bath, things like that. You're obviously going to want some kind of bath or something to put your baby in. So they make the flower, which I do have in the closet, just because I've been using the baby bath that I got at my shower since the beginning, because it's from like newborn all the way up until I think like 18 months or something crazy, because it comes with like the seat and then the sling when they're like little. It worked for me. It does have a hook that I can hook it up in the shower when we're done and I think that's one of the reasons I love it so much because I know I can just store it away after instead of having to worry about it like out and so it just I really like it it makes it easy and then when your baby's out of the shower you're gonna need a couple things you're gonna need a towel and obviously the lotions that go with the shampoo that you're using or the baby wash that you're using and a brush this is a safety first little set that was given to me in my shower. I think it was like five bucks for this and the comb. This is very soft and like the bristles are like firm, but it's very soft on her head. So I really like this. And then this is a little towel. Um, any towel will do. You can even use the towels that you have for you. It's not that serious, especially if you have some very nice soft ones. But if you want one with like the little hood so that when they get out of the shower, you can just throw it on their head. Um, you know, the baby towels have that. Don't spend a ton of money on all these different towels. You don't need more than two, honestly. I mean, after I'm done using this, I will have it dry on her crib 
and then I will roll it up and put it back away for the next time and I do it a couple times before I actually put it in the laundry because again it's a baby she's clean when she comes out of the bath I just dry her off and then that's it so I have two that I just rotate through and then I have a couple thicker ones for when she's bigger hanging in her closet that somebody gave me at my shower but I don't think it's necessary again to have more than just a couple of towels and then when you're in the bath you're also gonna need to have washcloths so these are Burt's Bees washcloths they're soft they're you know they do the job they came rolled up in a little set of like six and I always use two when I'm bathing her, one over her body so she doesn't get cold, and then another one to actually wash her body with, pick up the water with, put it on her head, things like that. Um, I don't think you need more than one pack. I just think you will be fine with that. I never need more than two. And then again, I will just wring these out, let them dry, and then in like a couple uses, I will throw them in the wash and I have the other, you know, three, four, whatever to clean her with if I need to. So yeah. You do need washcloths though. Okay, sleepers. Oh my God, these are the best. So I personally really like the Target ones. I've mentioned them a couple times on my Instagram and I've mentioned them in one, uh, one of my videos. I've mentioned these, but these are just very easy to have an all-in-one outfit for your baby. Now we're in quarantine, she lives in them. I'm not gonna change her out of her pajamas to just sit around the house all day. Um, you know, do you to each his own, but I just think I want her to be comfortable and it just makes it like so much easier for me when I have to change her diaper and all that. So the, my favorite thing about these kind of sleepers is they have the mitts. So if you do want to cover their hands and I cover her hands mainly because they get cold, not because of her claws, but if you do want to do that, you have the option too. And then they have the reverse zipper. I've said this before. I will not put my kid in a, in a little sleeper that does not have a reverse um, zipper. I'm just not doing it. It's just why complicate things, right? Like why undress her completely just to change her diaper? So the reverse zipper is golden. I would say if you're going to get sleepers, that is my number one thing. Besides obviously making sure they're soft and good quality and you don't want like a hard scratchy thing on your child. But if you're looking for something to just make your life a little easier, the reverse zipper is the way to go. Two other essentials that go kind of hand in hand with that are like onesie packs and socks. Some people hate baby socks. They say why it does nothing like they fall right off. Honestly, she was preemie and I was putting these socks on her. I didn't care. I just wanted her to be warm. So these are the ones that I have. These are the Carter's ones and these are zero to three months. They're nice and fuzzy and soft and just like comfy. I usually put these on and then uh, like underneath her sleeper just to make sure her feet are nice and toasty because they, they tend to be more on the cold side, her feet and her hands. Um, and then I will put her in a short sleeve one of these underneath, but... I have this long sleeve one here to show you guys because in the beginning she lived in these um, and these are the Carter's brands. The Carter's onesies are my favorite. They're the softest ones that I've tried. So I recommend them. Um, you're definitely going to want, I would say a 12 pack in the beginning of newborn just to start off with because you can go through them very quickly, especially with spit up and all that stuff. Um, but these also come with the fold over hands. So in the beginning, I would basically just throw her in this with no pants or anything, and I would just have her always swaddled and tucked and warm. Um, and then as she got bigger and didn't need to be in a blanket all the time, I would have her in this to keep her warm. These, I would definitely say are a necessity or an essential, and just get at least one pa pack of baby socks because they can wear this one sock all week. Like, they're not getting dirty. <laughs> they're not going anywhere. With that, you're gonna wanna get swaddles. So swaddles is one of those things that is like, are like bottles, right? Bottles are specific to the baby. The baby's gonna choose what kind of nipple, what kind of bottle they like. Same thing with swaddles. Don't go out and buy a million Muslim swaddles. Don't go and buy a million of these zipper swaddles or the Velcro swaddles. I would say try maybe three. Get a couple Muslim, maybe a zipper one, and maybe a pack of the Velcro ones that is like a two pack or something. See what your baby likes. Start off with that because you will see that your baby is specific and some babies don't like to even be swaddled at all which i don't know how people don't swaddle their babies that don't like to be swaddled because mine just like my baby is like whoo if she like you know isn't un isn't swaddled and she's like wakes herself up and it's, it's not good yeah so my experience with swaddles is she did not like the velcro ones she did not like her hands swaddled down um and the 
Muslim ones she always broke out of. So I finally realized that she likes her hands up. She always had them up in our in the ultrasounds when she was in my stomach, so makes sense. And so recently we've been using the Love to Dream Swaddle. It's nice and stretchy and soft and I feel like she's super comfortable in it. I really like it and guess what? It has the reverse zipper so I can change her in the middle of the night without unswaddling her completely, which was the worst when she was finally sleeping a little bit more um, through the night and I had to wake her up and like she was like what's going on I was all comfortable kind of thing so the muslim swaddles look like this and um, what I would actually say this is more an essential for is just for having a blanket having a blanket for your baby having something to put your baby down on to have a breastfeeding cover when you're out to cover the car seat if you don't have a car seat cover I think these just come in handy for other things besides actually swaddling your baby in. And another point that I didn't make with the um, zip up swaddles is those are actually safer and more recommended because the Muslim ones, the babies do tend to break out of. Then you have this loose blanket, it could get over their face. Just so you know, don't not to scare you or to sway you in one direction or the other, but um, these are still useful if you find that you had a bunch or you got a bunch in your shower and you open them and wash them and you can't return them keep them they're still good to use for other things i put this down when she's playing on her play mat um it's just they're just good to have her pack and play is totally an essential for me i'll be honest it might not be an essential for you but i will tell you how i use it and maybe then you will see that it might be an essential for you or not. So I actually have mine set up in my living room. It's more so just to keep her stuff. Like I'm in the living room 90% of the day. I mean the other 10% I'm in my bedroom sleeping at night. And you know, I'm a little bit in her room too. 90% of the day I would say, or 95% of the day I'm in the living room. So instead of having stuff everywhere, I have my packing place set up in the living room with her boppy and her a little set of wipes and a couple things so that way if I need something I don't have to go anywhere it's just right there it sounds lazy but it's just very convenient it keeps from your house having like wipes on the couch boppy on the couch um, burp cloths on the dining room table everything is just in one spot so I keep her burp cloths on there her bibs on there her wipes on there like I said and her boppy um, swaddle blankets. I just keep everything contained in one spot and when I need it, it's there. Now obviously that's not really the purpose of a pack and play, but you know, that's how I'm using it right now. If we have anywhere to travel to, I know I can just take that and she can always sleep in it. Um, or if I need to bring it to my mother-in-law's house and she's watching her, I know I have it. I just think a pack and play is very versatile and can be used for different things. This one that I have is a four moms one and it actually has a changing pad and, and bassinet um, for like little babies on top. So what I do is I take her boppy lounger, which I'll show you guys next. I'll put it in the bassinet part and I can always put her there if I need to like go to the kitchen and grab a drink or you know have to pee really quick you know like she, I know she's safe and contained there at this age at least whereas if I put her on the couch I don't feel as comfortable especially because I have dogs and I don't think that they would do anything to harm her but by accident maybe jump or like just something could happen it's just like a safe environment for her in our living room so this is by Boppy Lounger um it's kind of like a take on a Dr. Todd or a snuggle me organic definitely not the same thing but in the same family like they're not sisters they're like cousins you know what I'm saying so I put this in the pack and play and she just sits here like I said if I have to go run and do something I can take this and I put it on the dining room table when we're eating breakfast and I want her to come and hang out with us and keep us company um, I have taken it and put it on the bathroom floor if I have to go to the bathroom and I know I'm gonna be in there a little while I know TMI but real life then I will put it on the floor and she will hang out and sit there with me while I go to the bathroom and so I you know have the one side that I put on the floor and then the other side I keep without putting on the floor because I don't want her obviously to be sitting on the part that I've been putting on the floor but um yeah you can get covers for it if you want so they're easy to be washed and I just think that you need some space some place to put your baby um when you're not holding your baby basically so especially in the newborn stage when they're just like little and you can't really put them like under a play mat or in their bouncer or I don't know if you have a swing I guess a swing is a good way to good place to put them when they're tiny but just some kind of device that's easy to be moved anywhere 
if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I would say Boppy, uh, Dakotat or Sunko Me Organic. I went with the Boppy Lounger. It's very inexpensive. And then I had end up buying a Dhaka Top like knockoff off of Amazon and that works fine too. So totally up to you, but like I said, somewhere to put your baby when you need to kind of move them around the house. And then since we're talking about Boppy, um, this is the Boppy actual like Boppy pillow that you use to nurse. This is a cover that I bought at Bye Bye Baby that actually matches her decals on her wall. So I had to get it. I thought it was so cute. Anyway, I used this so much in the beginning that I had to mention it. I don't use it at all now, I have to say. The only time that I use it now is when I'm holding her and she's resting in my arms and we're just like, she's just taking a nap on me. And the same for my husband or if he's bottle feeding her, he likes to have it. Um, but in the beginning, I used it to breastfeed a ton. So if you're planning on breastfeeding, I would definitely recommend either a boppy or some kind of pillow to breastfeed with because it makes life so much easier when you don't know what you're doing and you're just trying to feed your child. This might be like my number one essential and this is mainly because I am neurotic. <laughs> no, I just have a lot of like, you know, anxiety being a first time mom. I'm just like, it's very overwhelming having to think of keeping this human alive, like essentially, right? You're just taking care of this baby and you've never had to take care of something so important in your entire life. So I just needed this so badly to sleep at night. If it wasn't for this, I probably still wouldn't be sleeping at night. It's just that extra little thing to make me feel like she's somewhat being monitored. So this is the Owlet Sock. Um, I actually was able to get this through my insurance if you have an FSA card or a flexible spending card you can actually use that now and buy it with that card um, the insurance approves it so I did buy it through that because it is a very expensive thing I think it's like three hundred dollars honestly if this thing was five hundred dollars I would have bought it there's just nothing like having that little piece of mind that little extra piece of mind so that's why I have this guy here you just slip it on your foot and then there's like this little monitor that's next to your bed you turn it on and it stays green if she's good like her heart it monitors her heart rate and her breathing i should have said that and so if those things are both great then it stays green it won't alert you if not it will alert you with sound and the light will change so i keep it on my nightstand and thank god everything has been okay i haven't had to worry um there was a couple instances where it was a little loose on her in the beginning so it did um, notify me that it slipped off and it plays like a little lullaby and it will blink yellow you don't want to see red because that's you know that's not good but I have heard that people have gotten false reads where um, their baby was totally fine and it went off so you know again all these things are recommendations from me but you have to see what works for you I just personally could not live without this like so happy this exist with that next to my nightstand i actually just unplugged this and took it right off of my nightstand <laughs> this is the hatched baby sound machine um i have one in my room for when she's sleeping in her bassinet next to me and then i have one in her nursery for when she's taking naps during the day in here i love this thing mainly because it's touch so at night you don't have to worry about like oh pressing that because it's on the bottom the buttons and i guess if it wasn't touch the buttons it would be you know more on the top and it'd be easier but when it's dark and you can't see what you're doing and you're tired and you're delirious and you just need to feed your baby, it's just so easy to just go like this. At night, you really don't need to touch it. I'm assuming you're going to just leave it on all night. But if you need to turn it off for some reason, you just touch it and it goes right off. And it's also a light. And to top it all off, you can control it from your phone as well. So when I'm up at night, I will have it on a certain light because I don't want it bright. She's. I'm trying to keep her sleeping as dark as possible um but i do like to kind of see her so i keep it on like two percent three percent and then when i get up in the middle of the night i'll lower it to zero like after our our first feeding like after she wakes up for her feeding in the middle of the night i'll lower it so that way she's only sleeping not too much longer and i don't really have to see what's going on but in the beginning when i first put her down I leave it on like 3% and then I'll lower it and I will lower it right from my cell phone. So yeah. Okay, so next up is a baby wearing wrap. So baby wearing is a huge thing. It helps you feel close with your baby. Your baby feels comfortable and close to you. You can do skin to skin while baby wearing. Um, you can breastfeed while baby wearing if you master that situation. I have not. But this is the Coney one and this one I like because it's literally like a shirt. The back looks like this. So it's 
nice and secure on your back and it's meant to be very comfortable and not put strain on your back which I like the front is kind of worn like this where you spread out the shoulders so that way when you put the baby in the shoulders are nice and spread out gives you the support it's just very easy to use and I didn't want to have to think about wrapping my kid like I just I don't know that sounded very overwhelming to me I probably could do it now but at the time it sounds very overwhelming it also comes with like an extra piece of fabric that you can wrap around the bottom of the baby like the bum of the baby um, if you feel like you just need a little extra support but totally recommend that one I really like it um, I do think some kind of baby wearing device even if it's just like a carrier is essential and you can find those for cheap um, doesn't have to be something super special or amazing but I used it a ton in the beginning when I needed to do dishes or I needed to just you know anything really around the house it was very easy for she's looking at me it was very easy for me to put her in there because she was so tiny and just sleeping all day anyway that it didn't matter if I put her in there and did what I had to do now I can put her down for her nap and you know do what I gotta do so I don't use it as much now but I think once the world reopens back up um, when we're outside, I would probably use it then too. And I do have an Ergo Baby um, actually carry, actual carrier, not like the wrap. But um, I have yet to use that because we haven't been able to go anywhere. But still think some kind of wrap is an essential. Bibs, I know it sounds like silly. I didn't think I would need bibs until she was older. Like when she was drooling or when she was eating. Like I didn't think about the bibs really in the beginning. And then she was just, or she is, just such a baby that spits up all the time that if I did not have a bib on this child at all times, I would be changing her about 100 times a day. So what I do is I will put on a bib and then if she spits up a ton and it, you know, gets super wet, I just change out the bib and she's all good underneath and I don't have to worry about going through, first of all, a ton of laundry or changing her, which she hates anyway. So the bibs are the way to go. Um, this one I got in a pack of 10. This is size three to six months. So I put these on her when she was literally like five pounds and it didn't matter. I just left it on her. It was like a dress on her, but hey, it covered her and it did the job. It was more like a smock at that point. Definitely recommend some bibs just in case you have a baby that spits up a ton. Just get like one pack that has like 10 like I have and you're good to go. And then for plus, I have two that I would recommend. So. These births, these ones are very soft and they're kind of on the smaller side. So what I like to use these for is more to clean her up. I don't really care to use them as like an actual birth cloth. Don't know how absorbent they are. They're just not as thick as I would like for one of those kind of situations over the shoulder. But to clean her up, they're nice and soft and I don't feel like I'm like ripping her face. Um, so I like to keep two on me while I'm, you know, dealing with that situation. So the second one that I keep on me is this one and this is actually a diaper this is a um what's it called cloth diaper and these are obviously very absorbent and they're big because they're cloth diapers so I put it over my shoulder like this get her on me and it's like nice and covered and absorbent and then once she's off me and you know I put her back down and I see if there's spit up on her face I'll just grab this one that's usually like on my lap or something and I'll wipe her up it's not necessary to have both of these just wanted to mention the kinds that I like but you need birth cloths some kind of birth cloth um, I know that the copper pearl ones have gotten like rave reviews so maybe next baby I'll try those at this point it's not worth it for me to buy them but those are nice and big and supposedly they're super absorbent I should have mentioned this when I was talking about the stuff um, her sleep stuff like the outlet and stuff because this is what I keep on the nightstand this is a diaper caddy um, if you plan on changing your kid at night which I think you should <laughs> especially in the beginning you're gonna want somewhere to just put her diapers her diaper cream her um, this is her changing mat just things like that this was super inexpensive off Amazon if you have something at home don't feel like you need to go and buy it this you if you have like a plastic bin at home that you could throw all that stuff in then fine i just wanted something that looked a little cuter <laughs> so this is on the side of my night uh stand and again it has her changing pad her butt piece and her diapers in here also wipes obviously this is the diaper rash cream that i actually recommend some kind of diaper rash cream um i think you should have i was happy that i was I guess smart enough to know that at one point I'm gonna want to put some kind of diaper rash cream on her because in the beginning you really don't need it you can even use some A&D which I have um, you can use Vaseline I know people use that but if your baby does get a diaper rash and you need something a little bit thicker 
then just get one jar of one of them that you've researched that you like. Triple paste is my favorite that I've used so far. Um, I've used the butt paste and I've used Andy and I think that's it. But triple paste has been my favorite. So you can open the jar from the top like this, which I love. It just makes it easier for changing her um, like one handed while you have the other hand on the baby. <laughs> I love this stuff. Get something just to have, like I said. Okay, getting down to the wire. Oh my gosh. This video is so long. Okay guys, so I had to import the footage, so I had a little break. I'm sorry if the lighting is a little different or I look like I moved, but let's continue on with the video. Okay, so the other thing that I would recommend or have as a newborn essential is a drying rack. You're gonna have all these bottles or, you know, these things like the nose frito or the nose buggy thingy, my haka. I wash all this stuff all the time and I throw it on a separate rack, which is this one. I do have a rack in my kitchen that I put my dishes on obviously, but to keep everything organized and not mix the baby stuff with my dishes, I have her own rack. I feel like this is kind of an obvious thing, but um, I do really like this one because it's simple and it comes with like a little cup thing that I keep here and I put in like her pacifiers and whatever else that's smaller. Um, and then it comes with a brush, which I love because it comes with a stand and it makes everything so easy. So this is the XOXO brand, I believe. Um, but any drying rack that you prefer will do. And then kind of in the same family is a bottle sterilizer. Do I think everybody needs a bottle, bottle sterilizer? No. I don't think it's 100% a necessity. I will put it out there. But if you do want to splurge on something a little bit extra, this guy right here is a nice one. I really like it. It's the Baby Brezza one. My only complaint with it is that I wish it just fit like a little bit more items. But... I like it. It does the job. And one of the things that separates this one from a couple other ones that I've seen is that it has the option to sterilize and dry your bottles, pacifiers, whatever else. So I always use that option. It's done in about 45 minutes and I just do it on my downtime while, while Penelope's sleeping so I'm not in a rush anyway. You can definitely just sterilize your stuff in boiling water and um, if you do want something like this, they do have way cheaper options also available. So just thought I'd throw it out there. And then the other thing that I want to mention is Penelope's Play Gym. It's the Love Everyone. That's the one that we have. I like the brand because it's more of like a Montessori kind of method of learning. Um, so that's why I chose that one. It's also aesthetically pleasing and super cute. <laughs> it's not like super obnoxious. And it doesn't have like all these lights and all these extra things that kind of just don't do anything learning wise for the baby but we've used it pretty much from the beginning i know you can do tummy time like right when you bring the baby home from the hospital but since she was so little i waited a little bit and then like three weeks in i started playing around with it or maybe two weeks in i started playing around with it and ever since then she's been on the play mat pretty much every day <laughs> if you want to get a swing that's also something that you can do for a newborn but I personally didn't and now she is in the bouncer and I would consider this one of my newborn essentials now because she loves it. I've been able to film this entire video and I'm sure when I go to edit this one, you guys will see it's a long one. And she has been napping while I bounce her this entire time. And I'm not breaking a sweat, I'm bouncing her and being able to film and it's just great. So I know it's something that I'm gonna be using when I need to take a quick shower and I just need to have her kind of occupied or um, just something where she can be sitting up a little bit more and just starting to look around because she's just starting to get to that point where she's interested in so many things and it's just been nice for her to be in a more upright position. And then lastly, this is not really a newborn essential, but I just wanted to throw it in here because I use it every single day and just have to mention it. I just got it. So this is the Haka and if you're watching this video and you're going to be breastfeeding, get it. That's all I can say, get it, because I have an entire milk stash just from using the haka. I'll just explain really quickly. You put your baby on one side, the haka goes on the other, you suction it on like this, you pull this part back and then put it on and then go like that. And the baby is eating on one side, so the letdown is happening obviously on both boobs then, and this is catching all that milk. So I'm able to Take that milk then, add it to a bottle, and then once it gets to a certain amount that I add in the fridge, like I keep the bottle in the fridge, um, then I store that milk. So every day I have at least one bag that I put in the freezer and I'm not doing anything. So I just had to mention it. I know it doesn't really have to do with like what she's doing. It's more of like a breastfeeding essential. Um, but I will be doing a video on that in a little bit, maybe in a couple weeks. 
Really quick, guys, I forgot to mention somewhere for your baby to sleep. I just felt like, I, I don't know, that was so obvious that I forgot. But yes, you're going to need somewhere for your babies to sleep. So I have a bassinet that is a kind of co-sleeping bassinet because you can pull down the side and have it very close to your bed. So it makes very easy uh, diaper changes, makes for very easy feeding sessions. And she's right next to me, and I love that. This is the Baby Delight one, and I will have it linked down below. Um, but again, you're going to need somewhere for your baby to sleep, whether you're going to do crib right away, have a bassinet to transition them then to a crib, um, or some kind of sleeping device that's going to go into your bed for close sleeping. So again, I'll link everything that I have here linked down below because obviously the insert and the pillow does not go come with the bassinet. If you guys are still here with me, you guys are the real MVPs. This is a long one, but I hope that you guys enjoyed all of these newborn essentials. Again, my essentials might not be an essential for you, but these are just my personal opinions on these things as a first time mom. I use them all the time and yeah, so I just thought I'd share them with you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Don't forget to check the down bar, the description bar, because I'll have everything linked either on my Amazon page or actually linked in the description. As always, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments area. And I think that's it. I hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in my next one.